Hello, everyone. Good morning. I know it's strange with uh, an empty crowd here. I only have two people. You guys are so faithful. Wow. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Those of you that are watching and involved with the PowerPoint and the sound and the interpreting the video and everything, I just want to thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I really enjoy watching the live stream the past couple months. Pastor has been preaching and it's been really good.
And since the eunuchs and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, they're different familiar people in the Bible, like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were princes that, you know, they were put into the fire. And so they were part of that group that Jeremiah had sent the letter to. And so I was thinking about God's letter that he sent to us. We're all spread out at home right now and just wondering, what do we do? We can't have church. Or, you know, the sickness is spread out throughout the whole world. People are dying. Some people, you know, have survived and gone through it. And people are thinking, well, what do we do? God sent this letter, and he says, continue. The main important thing to do is to call to God, and I will help you. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I just want to ask you to bless this lesson um, as we learn through this about what we're supposed to do during this whole COVID situation. Bless the service again. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, blame say, saying that the whole COVID, the coronavirus is caused by Chinese or someone else. Or, but if you go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So God said this, he says, I caused it. He sent the Jewish people into slavery, into captivity. He says, I caused it, I planned it. Not you or somebody else or anything like that, but I caused it. I have a plan and I have a reason. I want to help you understand. And so he's, so just like us, as we're at home with the coronavirus and everything, I'm going to tell you that God's saying it's okay. That he caused it and he has a plan. He has a purpose. The simple thing to do is to look up to God. So God had a plan for our church. You know, we may be busy and involved in doing stuff, and then a different situation happens, and now we're, we're at home, and we have to adjust. What do we do? How do we do things? And we have to get used to a different situation. And it's the same idea with Israel. The Jewish people are in captivity, and it's different now. They were in Jerusalem, and now they're in Babylon, and they have to get used to something different. And they're probably saying, well, what do I do? And God says, stay the same, continue. I want you to grow. If you look at verse 5 and 6, it says, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them and take ye wives begat sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. So God doesn't want you to fade away. God does want you to continue. You know, continue building you know, your house, your garden, <coughs> stay busy. Maybe you already have a house you don't need to build, but there are other ways that we can continue. We can pray. We need to pray. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue to read the Bible. 
So stay in that. Don't change that. What you've been doing and what you've learned, practice it. Apply it to your life. Same as with witnessing to people or discipling. Helping others. Being hospitable to other people. Don't change that. Keep that. God's saying, you know, when you've moved, you've moved to Babylon, what do you do there? Stay the same. Continue to build houses, settle there, have a garden, eat, have children. Don't diminish. Keep going. God wants that. But all day, 
24-7, he's like, oh, I can't stand it. Well, you get used to it. But sometimes there's problems and it causes fighting. We need to learn to have peace and be peacemakers, to get along. How do we do that? That's through the Word of God. The Word of God can help you have peace. And that's important. God says that if you're a peacemaker, it means that you are a child of God. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8 and 9, says, I know right now you're at home, you have nothing to do, you were going to church, and now you're at home. Watch out. Verse 8 says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. So it's a warning to Israel, to the Jewish people, those in captivity in Babylon. People come up to them that are false prophets or you know, magicians or whatever. And they're not used to it. God's warning them. Don't believe them. Keep your relationship with God, just you and God. And like right now you're watching me in the live stream. Do the same. Keep this relationship with God. Stay with Him. Look up to Him. Don't listen to people that may visit your home and maybe try to knock on your door and to deceive you into a different religion or doctrine. Ignore that. Say no. Don't allow that to come in. And there's also those that are weak, that are not strong. Those that are strong, witness to them, but it's not worth arguing about different doctrines or anything. But also, be careful and watch out. You know, online, there's false information. You may be curious and you just take whatever's there and you learn. It can cause you to change your life, to misunderstand the wrong doctrine. I have a friend who told me, he said, I'm an atheist. And I was like, whoa, no, you were a Christian before. Now you say you're an atheist? No. And I asked, what made you decide that you're an atheist? And he said, well, someone told me. You know, it's things that people told him. And he was influenced by that. You know, men influence you and change you who you are. Once you're saved and you accept Jesus Christ, you never lose that. You stay the child of God. You just lose the rewards in heaven when you disobey or, you know, leave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts your, your life. It's kind, of, it's kind of like you're an inactive Christian. And that's a shame. So please, watch out. When you're just idle at home, stay in the Bible. Go ahead and watch the live stream and learn. Keep that counsel of the Word of God. You know, when, Pastor, when Pastor Reggie preaches and when I'm teaching Sunday school, we're encouraging you and teaching you to stay the same, same doctrine, to follow Christ and not the world. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 9, or, I'm sorry, let's go to verse 10. 10 and 11, it says, For 
For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So not to think of negativity, but to give you an expected end. And this verse is saying that God already has a plan for you. So we will be back. Babylon, the Jews were in Babylon for 70 years, and God promised them that they would be back to Jerusalem. So God keeps his word, and he has a plan. So just keep watching him. Keep looking up to him. And stay positive. You know, God's telling the Jews, it's okay, stay in Babylon. You'll be back later. Don't worry, stay positive. And it's not a negative or bad thing. It's fine. And it's the same idea right now with the COVID-19. Uh, the COVID People are panicking and they say, oh, it's so bad. No, it's okay. God has a plan. God is preparing your hearts to look up to him and keep that relationship. God already has this planned. And at the right time, we can come back together as a church. And that's okay. We just have to stay positive, and it's not a negative thing. this, you're probably thinking, well, what do I do? What do I do? I'm not sure what to do. And so in verse 12, it says, so 12, 13, and 14, it says, then shall you call upon me and ye, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. So if you notice here, it says, first of all, it says, call upon me. So God wants us to call upon him. Then it says, go and pray to me. So it means go up to God. And then pray unto him. And the fourth thing is to seek me. Seek God. And find me. So find God. So seek him and then find him. And lastly, it says, when you search for God, do it with all your heart. You notice, I remember a while back, probably a few weeks ago, Pastor had preached about loving the Lord with all of your heart with all of your mind, and with all of your soul, and all of your might. He said, all of it. And so this verse is saying, search for me with all of your heart. So while you're sitting at home, doing nothing, or and, you know, while you're attending church, and, you know, when you're attending church, you say, well, Pastor, you me this, and tell me this. And then at home, you're like, well, I don't know what to do. Read. Practice what you learned. And then continue to learn. Don't wait for the pastor or the deacons or the teachers. Don't wait for them to tell you what the Bible says. But you haven't read. And right now, you have plenty of time while you're at home. What are you doing? So this is right here, this portion of scripture is telling you what to do. <coughs> to look up to him. To ponder what the scripture
scripture says to pray. Take that time with the Lord. And when you do that, you won't stray from the Lord. So I just want to let you know, in the next coming weeks, next week, I'm going to start back with doctrine. In the past, before all this happened, I've been teaching doctrine. Um, I talked I talk about bibliology, bibliology, which is the doctrine of the Bible, and the theology, which is the doctrine of God, Christology, doctrine of Christ, pneumatology, which is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, and then part of anthropology, which is the doctrine of man. We started talking about that, and then we stopped, and now everyone's at home. I was going to, you know, without waiting for church to start back, I decided to just go ahead and start teaching. So we're going to start videoing live streaming and continue with our Sunday school class and not diminish. So I'm going to continue teaching doctrine starting next week. I want us all to stay strong through the Lord. And I look forward to next week as I continue. Next week, I'm going to continue with the doctrine of man. I'm going to review that. Then I will go on to the doctrine of salvation, doctrine of the local church, doctrine of angels, and the doctrine of future events. And so that's what I'll be teaching the next couple weeks. So I'm praying for you. Keep going. This is what God's telling us to do. So I praise the Lord. And you know, the coronavirus had happened. I'm fine with it. I'm praising him for it. You know, I may have had health problems or um, not sure what to do, but it's really nothing. As long as we keep our relationship with the Lord. God is bigger than the world and bigger than the problems in the world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for encouraging us. That we don't feel discouraged. You know, coronavirus is happening and everything, but that we stay positive and that we stay excited for you. And continue what we're doing, continue to learn and read and practice and witness. And I pray that everyone will keep practicing that. Well, there may be some unbelievers that are wondering or curious about the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that they'll be able to listen to the live stream and learn from you and say, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Help those that are watching. We bless this service and we thank you in Jesus.